in Baltimore. Last night, far more calm for the most part. There was a curfew, uh, which was enforced by, obviously, uh, Baltimore and Maryland police, but also 2,000 National Guard members after a state of emergency was declared by the governor, the uh, Maryland governor. Uh, there were a couple of arrests last night, but uh, for the most part, things were calm. But now it's really the, the question becomes, you know, what happens next? I mean, I mean, it is one thing to talk about incarceration rates. It's another thing also to talk about the relationship that police departments around the country seem to have particularly in urban and poor areas, with the citizens there. But it's becoming sort of, I think, glaringly clear that we have a significant problem with extreme poverty in certain, if not many, cities across the country that is going to require some type of larger federal response. And the question's going to be, and, and kudos to Hillary Clinton for, you know, beginning to talk the talk in terms of police reform, and we're going to need some type of concerted effort. Now, here is uh, some audio from Rand Paul saying exactly the opposite of what I said yesterday in terms of my analysis of the problem there, that, of course, in Baltimore, the real problem is really has nothing to do with the incredibly the, the incredibly high unemployment rate. I think it's um, four times that of uh, other parts of even Baltimore. The incredibly high uh, amount of, of desperation, the incarceration rates in that neighborhood, nothing to do with you. You're still living amongst... Uh, bombed out houses from even 50 years ago. Uh, it all has to do with, of course, bad parenting. Here's Rand Paul on Laura Ingram's show. Do you think the president uh, would have been smart to come out uh, after the Saturday uh, night disaster where you had an entire baseball stadium told to stay in the stadium? It was so dangerous. Uh, and they still didn't call for any type of emergency procedures on the streets. They didn't call for any reinforcements, didn't call for a curfew. Uh, then this thing boils over throughout the day yesterday after Pause this uh, funeral. For I should just remind you that there are two states' writers t um, um, chastising the president for not coming out and I don't know doing what. But, but I mean, these are two sort of dyed-in-the-wool neo-Confederates. Right. Complaining that the president. Unilaterally, as the executive of, of the federal government, didn't interfere. But that's not the point of this. Freddie Gray, it was it was clearly and quickly spiraling out of control. What would you like to have heard perhaps earlier on from the president or even the new attorney general? You know, I don't know if there is an answer from the federal government. It obviously is a, is, is a local problem primarily, but you do have to have enough uh, show of security, enough show of a police force to deter the kind of action. I think once it happens, it sort of spirals out of control, and uh, it's 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 depressing. It's sad. It's scary. I came through the train on Baltimore last night. I'm glad the train didn't stop. But the thing is, is that really. There are so many things we can talk about, mm -hmm. but I think it's it's something we talk about not in the immediate aftermath, but over time. You know, the breakdown of the family structure, the lack of fathers, the uh, the lack of sort of a moral code in our society. And this isn't just a racial thing; it goes across racial boundaries. But we do have problems in our country, and you you see this, and you see that we're close to the tipping point, closer to the tipping point than many think. And um, so there are a lot of things that can be done, but there can be no excuse for the behavior. 
Okay, so, of course, he only talks about what can be done in the context of, there's really got to be either, I guess, I don't know if he's saying, like, forced um, forced marriages or uh, forced uh, moral codes on people. I mean, we can't possibly imprison more people, right, in that neighborhood. And so Rand Paul uh, bemoans the fact that the, the morality is not there and the absence of fathers. Meanwhile, this is a guy whose son just got stopped for a DUI and didn't even get arrested, uh, but merely just basically left to go on his own recognizance. Now, I wonder... If you juxtapose, if that son, instead of just like, you get a pass on the DUI, got harassed on a daily basis as he walked to school or walked to his job or took his car to his job, got pulled over. If that would change his behavior at all. I mean, I imagine Rand Paul, you know, would be bemoaning his own lack of uh, moral fiber in his family. This is his son's third alcohol-related uh, arrest. Oh, Not my arrest, God. Arrest, you know. Well, there's a little thing called freedom, and there's also race science, which people don't want to talk about. And my advisors are saying I shouldn't talk about, actually.